What's going on everybody? Biker Dave here in the basement. If you have a sump pump or foundation pump installed and you have noticed that the pump comes on but it stays on forever, never shuts off, don't panic. It's not impossible to repair. Uh, you'll need just a few things. First, you need to find where your sump pump is. It's probably down in the basement, you know, slab probably in a corner somewhere, but you know, maybe different for your location. A few tools you'll need. A hefty hammer, some kind of magnet would be helpful, like a little mechanics magnet. A uh, flat bladed screwdriver or a screwdriver bit on your drill. Some needle nose pliers. And it would be, it'll speed up the process if you have some type of, you know, hand drill or impact drill that'll have a 7 16 socket on the end. Or you can just use a regular ratchet with a 7 16 Oh, and something else, I like to use a kneeling pad like this because you're gonna be on your knees, might be a little painful. So a little gardening kneeling pad, I use one of these all the time. I'll put a link down below for one of those too. Because 7 16 is what these guys are that are surrounding the perimeter. So first you'll remove these bolts that go all the way around it and then we'll go from there it's just these little bolts right here that need to come off first Okay, remove all these guys with their washers. Make sure you keep track of everything. Don't lose anything. Okay, all these guys right here. Then you'll, now you need to remove the lid and, and go ahead and unplug the, unplug the power cord from the wall or wherever it's plugged in. You'll plug, unplug that. Now we need to remove this lid and just sort of lift it out of the way. You'll just sort of ride it up over this uh, piping right here so you can access what's down there that's where the pump is yours probably has some sort of seal around it here you should just undo it it's probably already got a slice in it but it might not so you might have to slice it to be able to remove this seal and then just lift this guy up get it out of the way my little water hose is for a humidifier or dehumidifier that actually puts water in here as well as for the foundation. And there is the pump. Okay. One other tip. You might want to use some simple green or some dirt cleaner and a brush and just spray it on top of the pump area. You know, just clean it off a little bit. Rinse it off with a, a pitcher of water or something. Because it's going to be quite dirty, I'm sure. And that's the easiest way to do it is I use simple green on just about anything that I want to remove dirt from. And just some kind of brush just a quick little tip looks a little scary but it's not that bad most likely the issue is there's a switch inside that lid that possibly needs to be replaced okay and to replace it you'll just need flat blade screwdriver either on your drill bit or a hand screwdriver and then because it's got a little seal a little gasket that holds it in place it might be a little sticky, so that's where you'll need your BF, BFH, big friggin' hammer, to tap the lid to just get it off of there. And then you need to disconnect the float right there. You just sort of pivot it. You'll see how it goes. It's very easy to, to remove. And uh, then you'll see the switch inside the lid. No big deal. Oh, and here is where a little magnet might be helpful because you don't want to drop one of these screws in there. So you may need to keep this magnet handy or you want to magnetize your screwdriver, you know, which means just touch a magnet to your screwdriver, you know, just touch it on the side. I actually leave my screwdrivers permanently magnetized. I put magnets in my toolbox. So the screwdriver always has a little bit of magnetism to it because you never know when you might need it. Anyway, now we'll remove these screws. There's four slotted screws on the corner. Just remove those, and then you'll tap, 
tap the uh, the lid with a big hammer, or you may be able to use a screwdriver, or you might not need anything at all. Tap that lid to make it come off. Then you'll need to disconnect the float right there. It just sort of lifts over and pivots out. Very easy to do. And then we'll move on. And then it's got a handle. See this handle right here? You might have to just bump the lid with your hammer or whatever, and then it comes off like so. Okay, now when you lift it off of here, tilt it over, then with the float, the float will just sort of lift off of this little guy right here. So it just sort of, see how it lifts off? Then just lay the float on the side. Here's your wiring, not that big a deal. Make sure you take a photo of this so you can see how the wiring goes back together. It's only a few wires, it's not that big a deal. Got your black, yellow, white, and black. And then there's a, a green, but it sets a ground right there. That one you don't have to mess with. It's only these ones that are connected that you'll have to uh, disconnect so that you can access the switch, which is right inside there. The switch is that black housing looking thing inside. So this, you know, you're, you're, you're almost there already. So use your needle nose pliers like these guys here to disconnect all these connections. Be careful. You know, don't, you don't want to break anything, but needle nose is the easiest way to get it off. All right. Now, once you have the wiring connect disconnected, you just lift it up out of here and here it comes. Okay. There's, that's the little switch that you will likely need to replace. So with your little Phillips head screwdriver, just remove these two screws. Very simple. Okay, and when the screws are removed from there and there, you just lift it out and notice, see this little rod right here is what's, it's just sort of fitted in between the switch mechanism right there. So just remember how that goes when you go to put it back in, it just sort of tucks in between it. And there's the switch, that's all there is. You know, you got a zillion dollar pump and this little $40 switch or whatever is what can keep it from working properly. Now I'll put links down below where you can get this online. Uh, you'll also, you should replace the gasket too. See this rubber gasket that surrounds this I recommend you replace that too, so you scrape it off with, uh, you know, with either a, a sharp screwdriver or a, a gasket scraper if you're a mechanic. Remove that right there, clean the surface off really well, and put the new one on. So make sure you get that when uh, when you purchase the new switch. You can also get this at Granger. It's more expensive, but there's a possibility that they'll have it on hand if you're desperate, and uh, or they can you know get it delivered to their your nearest store the next day. So that that you know it depends on how desperate you are. Otherwise, I'll put a link down below where you get it on Amazon. And then to put it back in place, it just goes. See the screw holes right there, and the little little arm. This little loop goes in between that arm right there. Make sure it's, make sure the little arm goes inside it. If you see what I mean there. Then put your screws back on. Phillips head screws right there. Okay. You got your screws back on. Make sure you got that mechanism fitted properly. New gasket should be on it if you're going to replace the gasket. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to do that. And then we'll reconnect everything and finish up. Okay. Bring her back down here and just lay the lid on its side. Because that makes it easier to reattach the uh, little float to the end of the arm right there if you have it tilted on its side like this. Do that first. Okay. Notice how the float goes right there. It's very simple. Then reattach your wires. Make sure you refer to the photo you had. Reattach those wires. Very simple. Okay, the first pair of wires. It goes black, yellow from top to bottom. 
All right, and then the second pair of wires, it goes white, black from left to right. So black, yellow, white, black, and make sure that little green one, which you really shouldn't have disconnected anyway, the green ground wire should have, shouldn't have moved anyway, but just in case you need to know. All right, then we'll reattach the lid to the top. So just carefully hold on to the little handle on the side right there and set it down on top. Okay, then take your flathead screws, put them back in the corners, and tighten them gently all the way around, and then just tighten them firmly once you get them gently put in. All right, once you got your screws nice and firm, make sure the gasket looks good, that it's not all hanging out sideways or whatever, because this is a submersible pump, and it's made to be underwater. So if that gasket's not in place properly, you'll have problems. All right, make sure everything looks correct. Now it's time to turn it on and see if it works properly. Here we go. Now, if yours is already out of water, the float is not gonna activate it. So you may have to reach down in here. Nothing's gonna to happen to you, but just lift up on the arm. If it comes on, and that little spray on the side is normal, I found. I wasn't aware of that, but it is normal for it to spray like that on the side. Now, if the float is down and it shuts off, it's working properly. Yay! So thrilled about that. Then just put your lid back down the way it came. Make sure you line up wherever your little screw bolt holes were. You know, just line those holes up down there. Put these guys back in place all the way around. Put your seal back in right there. Which is this guy here. Just make sure it seals down there. For demonstration, I'm not sealing it properly. And that should do it. So, thank goodness it's not that bad of a job. Oh, and if yours is not working at all, you may want to check the circuit breaker to see if it's tripped or something. Or, you know, the pump may be completely dead. And that's possible. And if that's the case, then you, you'll lift it out of there the same method. But you might want to call a plumber if he goes that far. Because you're going to have to probably do some cutting and things of the tubing. That's up to you, though, if you feel qualified to do that. Anyway. Anyway, that's it. Uh, once again, my name is Biker Dave. We work on cars, motorcycles, dirt bikes, ATVs, Harley Davidsons, stuff around the house. All kinds of fun things. So scan through our channel and you might find all kinds of stuff that could help you now or in the future. So like, subscribe, follow. And um, if what we've done, or if any... YouTube channel or video helps you solve a problem or maybe not make the same mistake, look for the thanks button that's right under the video screen and you can throw them a donation. We do it for other people too. So anyway, one of our latest projects, 1966 Plymouth Fury, all kinds of stuff always going on here. And look for the social media links in the description of this video. We have an eBay store, Amazon store, selling motorcycle parts and tools. Check it out. Biker Dave signing off, Marietta, Georgia. Y'all have a great day.